<clears throat> Thanks everyone for coming. Ian will be joining shortly again when, once he's sorting out some of his technical issues. Um, so tonight's plan is, since it's our last meeting for the year, um, initially Ian wanted to kick off with a demo of the latest Ubuntu, which is the 2010 version, and to see what's actually happening there. But now he ran into a problem that the screen share of the entire screen doesn't work. And then when he tried with Chromium instead of Firefox, he got a screen share, but it was all black plus mouse cursor. So it wasn't particularly great. So he'll try starting up uh, Ubuntu Mate instead of the GNOME version and see whether that's going to behave any different with a bit of luck, hopefully. So in the meantime, I'm just going to give a quick presentation on the fast reverse proxy, FRP, um, that I've come across, or actually um, a colleague of mine has come across. And um, so if other people should be joining, um, we can then also try doing something, maybe general uh, troubleshooting, which we're already doing with Ian. <laughs> um okay right cool. thanks angus we'll see whether that changes if he's switching to mate but um that's probably another pitfall to look into whether we need xdg desktop portal then cool anyways i'm just gonna start sharing my screen then all right right so the fast reverse proxy, that's a project that a colleague of mine came across when we were dealing with IoT devices. The problem with those IoT devices connected via 4G modem was that we couldn't directly access those because they were on a private subnetwork on the 4G network that we were on. So in order to do like um, remote maintenance or updates or in general sort of like checking out what's happening on the machine, um, we needed sort of like some kind of remote access and the uh, fast reverse proxy is filling that niche quite nicely. So I'm just going to go on the GitHub account of that. Um, so description, so basically allows you to expose a local server behind uh, network address, address translation or firewall to the internet. And at the moment, the support space TCP and UDP, as well as HTTP and HTTPS protocols. Um, and um, so you can basically then, um, a device that's behind your firewall or inside your home network, like for instance, a Raspberry Pi, which I've set up here, um, you can then basically access from outside. So what I'll be doing this. So there's, um, there were some examples. So I'll be basically looking um, at a very, very basic um, setup for tonight. So just here, a little graph that I've put together. Um, it's not necessarily the greatest, but anyway. So on the left, we have a Raspberry Pi that is in my local network, which has then basically the reverse proxy client running here connected via a router to the internet. Um, and I have another computer that's connected via some form of router to the internet, which I would like to connect to my Raspberry Pi. Usually that's not possible because the Raspberry Pi doesn't actually have an external IP address. Um, and I could probably, depending on the router that I have, I could in theory expose that through whatever router I actually have, some of them offer that, but then still it might, uh, may not be what you want to do. <clears throat> so one of the solutions is, if you don't have a particular router that supports that, is um, to have one server, for instance, um, with a known IP or static IP or a D, uh, fixed DNS name um, that you can use as sort of like your entry point from your computer. So where you can then connect to and the fast reverse proxy server is then running on this, which then forwards basically the 
support to the Raspberry Pi because these two, the Raspberry Pi client plus the Raspberry Pi server, they're both um, know about each other. So I can then basically, um, so the Raspberry Pi knows that there's a server running under my server example.com on port 7000, it connects to it. And then I have a server set up that um, if I connect on port 6000, that basically forwards the SSH port onto my Raspberry Pi. So I have basically a AWS instance that I'm running here. Um, if I'm looking at uh, what did it do? So I basically have two ports open on my instance there, which are basically the server port on 7000 and 6000, which I'm going to use as an external port open, which then gets forwarded in a very simple fashion to the Raspberry Pi device. So, and on, so for doing that, um, since I figured it out a while ago, um, I'm just going to go through the instructions here. So I created a little, um, Posted in the chat as well. Um, a little tutorial, well, instructions how you can set it up. Um, so we have our server, and for instance, an AWS in the free tier running. Um, just need sort of like a few ports open. Um, I'm using um, DIN DNS, so I, rather than having a fixed IP address, or whenever I spin up that instance that it changes, I use noip.com simply because I've been using it for, I don't know how many years, <laughs> probably goes back for over 20 years. Um, and um, I can basically set up a free sort of like DNS name with that. There's plenty of services around that that do that. The installation is really, really simple. You basically download the binary um, that that um, guy provides from his um, fast reverse proxy. Um, you then uh, unzip it, um, basically, so a few simple instructions, and then you basically just create one any file for the server, and all you need to do is please bind to port 7000. All the other defaults are fine. And since we want to have this thing also running whenever we're restarting, rather than just when we're manually rebooting this, we're also setting up a little system D service, basically, um, and what we're basically calling is simply just the FRP server with this little configuration file that we just configured and that's it. After we've saved that file we can then basically enable that service and then starting that service. So cool, that's basically what happens on the server. Um, and one thing is also quite nice, so even if the server goes down or gets rebooted, which can happen every now and then, or network is um, not available, any client will basically try reconnecting to the server on certain intervals. So on the client itself, um, we actually basically only need port uh, 22 for SSH access. Um, depending whether they have like a 32 bit or a 64 bit, um, um, like Raspbian running, you just download um, the 32 bit or the 64 bit version. Um, untied and then that's it as well and that particular any file is a little bit larger because we also have to have the server um, configuration in there so basically your dynamic DNS name here the port 7000 that our server is running on and then we want basically SSH having it enabled we're just basically using just plain TCP and the local port will be 22 and on the server we want to listen on port 6000 so whenever some the server basically gets a request um, ssh request sort of like on port 6000 forwards it here to 22. same thing with system d also creating a little one and similar to the server we also basically rather than running the frps server we're running frpc client with our ini file and same thing we enable it um, and then start it. And then you can basically, if you want to sort of like secure it, 
which I'm not going to show tonight. You can also then just do via SSH keys. So you just generate a key, put that in authorized keys, and then on your, for instance, on your admin, you can then sort of like create a setup that uses that particular key. And once that's working without any password, then on the Raspberry Pi, then you can sort of like turn off the password authentication and restart SSH for that to take um, place. And then from then on, you can basically just log in without any keys in your setup. Cool. So I have a little Raspberry Pi sitting here on my desktop. And I'll be, so I have already did that before. So my thin DNS name is fracp-test on port 6000. I'll just log in with the Pi user and it will basically ask me for the password. And I am basically on my Raspberry Pi. And that's it. And it behaves just like logging in remotely on any other box. And I wouldn't even know that this is actually going through the reverse proxy. It is really, really fast. So, quite cool. So, for the, of course, mapping for each server that you wanted to administrate, if you wanted to map each server on a different port, then you'd be opening a lot of ports. So my colleague actually came across another one where you actually sort of like share names between them and then that can be sort of like dynamically allocated with the ports and everything. So that is a little bit better. But there's also examples um, on the GitHub's repo um, setup for doing that. But that is basically my thing here. Oops. Uh, sorry, I forgot you. Um, cool. I'll just stop sharing my screen. Any questions? Um, pros and cons, good question, um, versus SSH port forwarding, um, Angus asked, um, at the end of the day, basically what I've done is more or less just remote port forwarding, but, um, with, it is, it supports different, um, um, protocols as well. And one problem that my colleague encountered uh, on that wireless network was as a regular TCP wasn't allowed or something. And I think he had to use something like XTCP or something. Um, and so there's a few different versions uh, that can be used sort of like to basically go through uh, that and work around certain problems. Um, and I think the main thing was with managing sort of like a large number of IoT devices, you don't actually have to manually do port forwarding then um, sort of like you can then just, um, you still have to know sort of like between server and client that they know each other, but they can basically then sort out based on a matching name pair, um, what um, port dynamically they're actually going on and you just connect to and that's it then. So that makes that a little bit easier. But um, I think that's the main reason really for having it. And let's just have a look. Oh, a new release is out. Hmm, didn't see that. Um, so let's have a look at that release, at the earlier release. So it also basically is available on Windows. Um, <clears throat> OS 10 FreeBSD and then various Linux variants. So that might maybe help if you don't just have a Linux box. <clears throat> you can then also connect to Windows boxes then, I presume. <clears throat> Does that answer your question to some degree at least, Angus? Right, Ian has disappeared again. 
after allowing him in. I'm not quite sure what's happening there. <clears throat> Um, CDETC um, on what? Oh, okay. <laughs> wrong, bra wrong window. Fair enough. Um, hmm. Nope, Rod's gone. Yeah, I wonder whether Ian's coming back again. Hmm. Oh, Rod's back. Oh, might be Ian then. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's see whether Ian's coming back there. Sorry, Ian, I didn't see you earlier that you joined. Ian? You are uh, yes. Off? Yep, I can hear you. I'm back. Okay, I'll make you presenter. Okay. Uh, but right. does it work? <laughs> well, mm -hmm. yeah, well, we'll see. Um, Start Angus, sharing. Yeah. Angus, um, Angus basically posted something in the chat. Oh, okay. Do you see anything in the chat, or is it all gone for you? No. Um, what we got? Angus pros cons versus SSH uh, remote XDG desktop portal GTK. Oh, I've got to wind back a bit. Hang on. You might need to install. Oh, okay. XDG boom. Okay. Um, well, give it a go here. Yeah, I've just booted up um, Mate. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I can see whether that'll share. Before I booted up GNOME. Mm. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'll click on share. Sorry, you'd given that to me. Select window or screen. Ah, okay. Now. Okay, so Ian Nubante Mate. Oh, no, I don't want that one. Entire screen. Okay. Wow. All right. Yeah, Mate works. Yeah. So it's probably like Angus said that it's a um, problem with the permissions there, that you need the XTG portal. Oh, XTG okay. Portal. Oh, well, I could try that. Have you... I, I've been... Hunting around in my shed trying to find a, um, a switch and some cables. So I finally found a link. Right. That's what. Have you done your presentation? Or yeah, I'm finished. Yeah, I'm. Good. <laughs> okay. It was only a short one, but I'm recording. So. Oh, okay. Um, well, I can talk a bit about um, about this, but um, if if you want me to just go ahead. Yeah, sure. All right. Um, I really want to kind of get rid of that, don't I? Yeah. Okay, well, this is, I put in um, Ubuntu, Mate, well, Ubuntu 20.10 is the release that came out in October. And uh, I put it in for, <coughs> um, I, I downloaded the, the GNOME version, and uh, I've also downloaded the Mate version. So what you're looking at now um, is the Mate version. And um, um, as you can see, it comes with a terminal. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I don't like about it is you just get this one menu where it's got got everything in it, um, including like um, what preference thing things that are sort of administration stuff is here, and um, I like to have that separate. Plus, there's um, there's not really a way of, of um, where is the, there's no file. 
you know, apart from you really got to go here to to bring up and look around, you know. So anyway, what I like to do is I go um, down control center and there's a Mate tweak here. Right. And if, if you go to panel and change to traditional, okay, then it gives you three three options up the top of the screen there on the top on the system menu bar and um, so now it just all your applications are in one place and you, you can jump to um, um, whatever uh, folder you want to get to things look around and um, your system stuff is, is under here you've got your hardware preferences um, like disks um, so at the moment I have this solid state disk and we're in partition 8 which is Mate I put the GNOME one in 7 I can't remember what's in 6 and 5 but they're older versions oh one was um, these are both Mate um, 2104 long term support partitions one of them was just just for trying out um, what was that uh, oh, whatever the presentation I did the other other day to try um, yeah, forget what it, what the actual thing was but okay anyway that's discs um, yeah so it comes with um, Firefox up here and if we bring in the menu bar you can see it should be 94 I assume is the latest I think this is I had after doing the install I had to put in about oh, was it 400 megabytes of uh, patches to uh, to bring it up to date and I think that uh, uh, patched the Mozilla Firefox as well um, as for, as for what, I haven't read the release notes, whether I could um, bring them up and see what, what the release notes is. Um, what's changed? So, anything exciting there cager and format drives and there's a new book reader sidebar cager is is this here which is the um pretty sure that's cager yeah which is your like your file manager um quite handy if we can format a drive we can put a usb stick in there or something Right clicking on one of the devices. Device, oh, okay. Uh, uh, for, uh, very good. Yeah. One of the things was I I think both of these other t these two here are 22, uh, 2104, and then I've added these, two, oh no, um, well, boot, uh, plus I've booted one. Um, the uh, uh, what was it? The, the oh, I, I tried to install them as UEFI devices, and uh, uh, I got through the installation, and it came to installing the Grub or configuring Grub or something like that, and um, and it failed at that point, and I couldn't continue. So I went back to do um, legacy mode or whatever and reinstalled, and um, it also failed. But that is one of the last items in the installation. And after I, um, although it claimed it failed, I I just what did I do? I exited, I think, and um, and the 
it, it was there and I could boot it up. So um, so it hadn't really failed and put things in. Well, that's what I believe. Um, anyway, uh, well, your, your um, PDF reader has got faster scrolling. There you go. Um, I don't know if there's anything else exciting there. Now supports encrypted RAR files. That could be handy. RAR files seem to be getting quite popular. Um, Only popular with Windows users. Yeah, yeah. That's what, actually, John was trying to get... Um, there was a, uh, there's a whole lot of websites. What is it when your phone locks up and they that Google... Um, if if RP is it um, firmware protection reset or firmware reset protection, and uh, there's a lot of websites out there that claim that you can download this utility and it will um, clear it, but you end up downloading a RAR file, and then then you need a password to unpack the RAR file, and the password mm. didn't work. Yeah. And probably just get a virus. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and a whole lot of pop-ups, yeah. Um, okay, but um, I don't know whether there's any, anything more to show there. Um, what else is it like to be? I suppose if we just do a, um, what is that? New name. So we're running uh, Linux for 5.13. What's what, what's the latest, Peter? Do you know? <laughs> um, I don't have my my arch oh. one here, but um, <clears throat> it usually runs very latest ones. Uh -huh. um, kernel five fifteen, long term. Uh -huh. the so long term is five fifteen. Okay, so it's not too far behind. Why well, is in long term? Yeah, not sure mm. what the current actual release is. Could be a good wiki. It'll tell you in there. Now on kernel kernel dot org. So, uh, mm. four, I think uh, yeah, five, five sixteen is currently uh. mainline. Stable is 5.15.4. Okay. Um, mm. so yeah, it's, well, it's, better. it's better because of my... Um, what am I running here? Um, on my um, Linux Mint here, which is... Linux. What is it? Um, 20.2. Um, uh, um, oh, that's actually still running on Bionic. Is it? No, it can't be. Um, Local. Right, that's what it's running. That must be the twenty or four, I believe. Yeah, twenty or four. So you're doing quite well if you're running. So I'm running still kernel five point four. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So that's much better than what <clears throat> already what eighteen or four was. But um, you're doing quite well with five thirteen. Um, and LibreOffice is up to 7.2 here, so uh, it's fairly, fairly new, I think. Um, I thought there was discussion about making this being a ribbon like um, Microsoft Word. Don't they have this sort of ribbon banner mm -hmm. thing that you can I tick on arrows at their end? Hmm? I thought that you could switch that over. Hmm. Mm. Mm. 
is this what mm-hmm. kind of preferences or something um tools and then options at the bottom I know there was talk about it, but I'm not sure whether it ever happened. Was it just yeah. for writing? It's been going on for a while. Mm-hmm. I thought that had come out of, um, of like beta. Apparently, some people like it. View. No? Icon style. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, well. well mm. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. There was actually a change at some stage, but what about custom ones? Two words. Maybe. Mm. Mm. What? Anyway, yeah, something to look for. <laughs> um. And I assume, I haven't tried, but I assume you can load the New Zealand dictionary, all right? Um, I presume so. I don't know. Mm. See if it'll do it. It'll be quicker than that. Hmm. Okay, I got it. Ah, how do I change it back? <laughs> <laughs> um, option, no, not that one. Shoot. Oh man, I have no idea how to change that back. <laughs> oh, oh screwed now. Um, so how do you do it? I don't care if I, if um, I can change it back. Um, I'm just trying to because it's changed and I no longer have the menu, so I can't actually tell you. Uh, oh. What were you in? Options or customize? No, 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 it was actually just from the main menu. Um, oh. Form. It's... View, I thought. View, oh, okay. Normal what? web toolbars. Yeah, toolbars. How do you want us as regular or, rib- or r- r- tabbed? Oh, standard block toolbars. No, I'm not, I haven't got that choice there. Okay, um, yeah, if I knew how to get that thing back again. <laughs> Sidebar. Navigator. Shoot. Oh, great. How do I do that? Mm. Um, 
sorry, oh. user interface. If you go on view user interface. View user interface. Ah, okay. They can choose choose standard, standard toolbar okay. or tabbed. Oh yeah, it's back again. Yay. Okay, so apply to writer. All right. Okay. And that's what people die for. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that's more confusing than before. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of it either. Mm -hmm. Some people really love it. I thought it sort of had arrows and it moved along as a ribbon, but... No, you have sort of like the, well, it is a ribbon because you have like tabs and then underneath it's like a ribbon with different things. And if it doesn't fit, I think on the screen, then, oops, wow. that didn't work well. That's a bit small. Then you have, then you can sort of like see the rest of it and stuff. But, um, I don't know, toolbars, I use interface, insert. So, oh yeah, so so once you get you insert hmm? layout. Oh, it still gives you subsets, doesn't it? Yes, that's the various subsets. Right. So you got home, which gives you, I guess, most stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. No, that's sort of like the default, I think, toolbar that you usually have. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. but uh, at least you can go back relatively easy so if you know where it is so on the right hand side you should have a burger menu those three oh, yeah. lines if you yeah. click on that then you then you see user interface as well and then you can switch back to standard toolbar okay single toolbar sidebar tab compact okay so, right. Okay, well, that, that's available. Hmm. Hmm. I put, oh, yeah, no, there's normally things down there, and you can spread this out. Can't you? Yeah. Hmm. Good. Um, so, I don't know whether there's anything, um, I think, in the, in the, um, Control center, you can now set themes or something like that. You can have different colors. And, um, but I thought you had that before, didn't you? In this Marte tweak. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, it's not it's not something new. Um, hmm. uh, I'm not sure. So um, I can't see the Amazing. screen, yeah. but does anyone want me to show something <laughs> in particular? There's a... I think it's mainly really an incremental release, like with most things. It's not major things. Yeah. It's just nicely working on Marte, actually making it something useful compared to, I mean, I know I like bashing GNOME, but I wasn't a big fan of it. Mm. And I'm still not. Simply because I'm an old grumpy bastard, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is based around what do they call it? Um, the desktop manager is light, light DM, isn't it? It's a desktop manager. A greeter, isn't it? Hmm? Yeah, light DM, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, whereas I don't know the the gnome release. I guess it's gnome, is it? The, the yeah. desktop man. There's something like clutter. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, shall I try one more time at booting the other Ubuntu and just <laughs> see yeah, if I can get And I mean. Get it. If you install that XDG, then yeah, um, right. 
I'll um, okay, right. Well, I'll I'll shut down and and then I can read what Angus wrote. Yep. Okay, so I should be back soon. I'll just yep. reboot. Okay, okay. See you soon. Oh, that's that. Right. I'll just wait a couple of minutes for Ian to boot up again and see whether we can get that sorted now with um, Angus's trick, hopefully. Um, what is everyone else actually using as desktop? I mean, I personally use Linux Mint Mate. Um, what is everyone else using? Feel free to type in the chat. Oh, Angus, Norm41 on Wayland. Oh, yes, Cinnamon. Back when Linux Mint came out, I tried, or when Linux Mint first had Cinnamon, I was trying it and then I found it was quite a resource hogging uh, beast. And I switched back to the old Norm2 sort of like version of Mate and that was working a bit bit better on my uh, machine because I think it was mainly having trouble with the integrated chipset for the graphics. Um, Marte sort of like seemed to be handling that better, but it's come a long way anyways over the years. Oh, with different orientations. That's an interesting one. So you have like one vertical and one horizontal or something. Um, All right, I'm back. Um, yeah. Yep, I can hear you. Where's um, I'll make the presenter? Okay, XDG portal. Hmm. Well, true, code goes well in portrait mode, yeah, that's what it used to be like. Um, I mean, I just so rearranged my XD, IDs. XDG desktop portal. Yeah. Mm, I'll try that. We're coming back to David's comment, sort of like with portrait mode. Um, I personally just rearrange my IDs that I have in the center, basically the code and left to sort of like my project and on the right hand side I have my code structure that I'm in so that makes nice sort of like works quite well um, for widescreen laptops all right let's have a look rotation so okay. I'll just oh, I'll turn my camera on I suppose No. What was that? Well, to answer um, David's question, so I have my laptop screen now upside down and my main monitor normal. So that seems to work, <laughs> having sort of like separate. Um, and that's just running on Mate. Uh. Uh, actually, oh, yep, we're back in business. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Um, I realize now that I hadn't clicked the the menu option below, so that that's why it hadn't come up in green, I guess. So, so perhaps I didn't need to install that. Okay, well, this is Ubuntu um, 22.10 for GNOME. 21.10. Sorry, 21, yeah. Um, yeah, for the, you're living in the future. Yeah. <laughs> the one to look forward to will be 2204. It will be the next LTS release, won't it? Um, mm. Yeah. Next year. So it, it, ha it defaults to having um, uh, these sort of quick shortcuts to applications. So that's the one to Firefox, and it shows, I guess, what's the two dots mean? Have I got two Firefoxes up? No. Not quite sure. I'll just move, I'll move it out of the way. Anyway. 
Um, and then you know, rhythm boxes for sound, file manager. I'm not sure whose file manager this uses. Just called files. Okay. Um, and got defaults to having Thunderbird mail. I assume the writer will be that 7.2 again. 7.2, yep. yeah. Um, and Ubuntu software, where this is their latest. I don't know whether this is all snap kind of stuff, but I would have thought there'd be something for internet. And I would have been able to um, find Chromium here, but, but there's no. There's no. Probably entertainment. Entertainment, I think. Hmm, seems a bit slow. Hmm. <laughs> um. PHP store. That's really interesting. Is it? Yeah, it's like social. <laughs> PHP store is an ID from JetBrains. Writing PHP. Yeah. This is really um crappy font here. That's. I mean, is if it? it looks bad on your screen, it also looks bad on mine. Oh, okay. Um, I yeah, thought it was just that. scaling. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's all right in this image here. Welcome to. But yeah. up there, yeah. I don't know what font they've used. Oh. They must be doing some scaling there. That's a bit odd. Yeah, see, that that's an image. That's Spotify. But this Spotify here is all, it's all jaggers on the edge, isn't it? It's all got jag. Yeah. Mm. It's as though they've turned off an anti-aliasing or whatever yeah. it's called. So what was that called? That was the app. Well, this is this one here, um, Ubuntu software, mm. which is meant to show you all the wonderful things in the in the Ubuntu's. I wonder what games has to say. I get the impression it hasn't loaded from its main repository. Hmm. Um, anyway, so that one you can play with. Help is there a terminal, the trash can. And down the bottom here, show apps. You can um, have a look at all your apps that, that ship with it. And if you want, you can I think you can add them over here, can't you? No? Maybe you right click. Um, I thought that was a way of adding apps. Um, and oh, here's the Chromium that I stored before. Um, mm. So it fills that screen, and then I can go over here and look at the second screen. Um, the setup for this software updates software. Where's setup gone? I don't put setup. No, so although that's meant to be oh, settings here. Yeah, this is um, this is all you've got to really control your your system. Um, one of the things that has that um, that, that uh, Ubuntu Mate doesn't have is this online accounts and. Um, so if you if you want to get to your Google Drive or something like that, you'll need to um, set up an online account with Google. Um, I looked, I, I, I did a search on how do you set up online accounts for um, Ubuntu Mate, and the um, suggestion was that you install the settings from Ubuntu GNOME, so you actually chuck this application into Ubuntu Mate, and it comes complete with a like this 
heading and the font that it uses and stuff is um, is different from, mm. from yeah, slightly yeah. different from Mate, but you you pick up all it comes across. So that's how you know you're using something that's been stolen out of GNOME. Mm. It's got this same look to it that GNOME has. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you can quickly share my screen and show you what the soft, well, the Ubuntu software equivalent looks under um, Linux Mint. I mean, they come, everyone needs to create their own sort of like separate application for installing software. I don't know why. I mean, there's right. it's out there already anyway, but yeah. If you yeah, don't mind. Okay. If you want to, do you want to grab it back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quickly. Yeah, that one. So yeah, this is basically what it looks like. And guess what? There's an internet button. Uh, yes. <laughs> and then yeah, click on there, and then Firefox, Chroming, all the things that you need. Yeah. So I don't know why this hasn't. Yeah. Loaded. Seems a bit odd. And I mean, just. I think that's basically sort of like, apart from flat pack, that's basically your um, categories in your main menu. That you have like graphics and so on, sound mm -hmm. and video. So, but also has flat pack as well. So you can install oh, Steam. I see. You can still install sort of like other things from there. But yeah. So yeah, I mean, really, really simple, but. Polished. Yeah. Um, Maybe you're missing some fonts or something, or some rendering. Yeah, or I didn't com complete the installation or something. Yeah, there's a leftover from that. Um, I'm just actually, although I did an update a few days ago, I'm just doing an update now just to see whether that helps. <clears throat> hmm. yes. I mean, the Mate seems more the um, incremental update, and, and the Ubuntu. I don't know whether it's because of the norm forty, but there's a few niggly bits in there. And I mean, it's not a long term anyway. The twenty ten mm. is not one. Was it twenty or four? Was or is twenty one or twenty one or four is not long term? It's just a twenty or four. Hey, eh? twenty two or four would be a long term again. Yeah, in six months' time, we'll be on to the next long term. Mm. It might be the case that it then actually, um, um, whether that works. Hmm. Plus alternatives to Team Viewer. Um, that's a good question. Um, look. I actually haven't tried Jitsi myself. Um, I mean, 
mainly VNC, I thought. So here's a list. So alternative2.net is quite a good website if you're trying to find um, um, alternatives to existing pieces of software. It's quite a large repository that they have. Um, what was that? Came across me today. Oh, yeah. So, so interestingly enough, um, so I just saw actually today in the news. Um, so, it's actually um, the northernmost state in Germany is actually switching all their 25,000 machines in the public offices to Linux and they're using Jitsi basically as um, communication tool but I'm not don't, I'm not aware of where that actually um, um, allows controlling There seems to be an old post three years ago on Jitsi that talks about that remote control. Oops. There seems to be in the community how to there's an um oh it's been disabled. Huh. They had a feature but it looks like it has been disabled again for security reasons. Well, the one thing that actually um, that I've seen someone else use was the Chrome Remote Desktop. Okay. Um, student of mine um, what was the last year I used that. I don't know to do that. I mean, it's a Chrome extension. Yep, we know that, but um, it is cross-platform because I think she, my student was she was on a um, OS ten machine, and I was on, and or she was, I think she was on a Linux box and had to do that on a OS ten machine, so somehow like that. Hmm. 
So apparently the remote control get disabled to your security problem in Jitsi. Well, according to the, the about, um, mm -hmm. Ubuntu software is the name of that application that should put a nice GUI on loading. Right. Um, and I was just going to try and remove it and reinstall it, but um, I can't get APT to find it. <laughs> it's not called Ubuntu software like it is in All right. about. Um, what they call, maybe it's called GNOME software or something like that. GNOME software common. GNOME software develop. Maybe that's it. GNOME software. Oh, well. I'll just, maybe that's what I need. Oh well. I'll just I'll just try one thing I always wanted to try was actually a pat Apache Gokamoli because it's basically browser based. What's it? APT remove or APT uninstall? It's not. Oh, GNOME software is not installed, so it's not called that. <laughs> oh, well. I'll try installing it and see what it is. Right. I guess um, we can probably stop the recording. <laughs> yeah. Well, We're probably done. Anyway, thanks if, everyone. If you, if, oh, if you want to just can... give, share it back to me, I can just show oh, yes. you the improvement. I don't know whether it's much different. Um, yep, you should be able to. Oh, I've got a big blue plane here. Yeah, this was that. What I what did I just put in? GNOME software. Oh yeah, it does look better. Yeah, it must have sort of like some fonts may not have been installed or something. So much for the hamburger bun, though. It doesn't do anything. Oh really? Yeah. Hmm. Um. So do you have? Do you have anything like with sections now, or can you scroll, or what happens? No, it, it, <laughs> it's a bit of a dud. This it, it's not. Uh, oh. Whatever I click on doesn't do anything. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, that didn't work too well. Seems to be buggered. But oh. <laughs> well, on this note. Um... <laughs> yeah. 
I think it's time to stop. Maybe recording. wait for a few weeks to have them f have them fix it. Yeah. Uh, banana product, maybe ripens with I the can't even, I can't even kill the app now. When I click on that, I won't kill off. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. maybe I'll just stop the recording then. Yeah. And um, thanks, Ian, for presenting. And well, yeah, not we're not necessarily <laughs> uh, playing along, but yep, yeah, cool. Um, feel free to stay along after I stop the recording. And mm. thanks for tonight.